All right, I want to show you something. These are all of my watercolor brushes. Now, I feel like I don't even have a lot compared to some artists. But today, let's talk about what three brushes are most important and what they do for you. The first type of brush that I think is very important is a large mop brush. So we're talking about a brush like this. A large mop brush that can hold a lot of water. And this brush is important for the beginning phases of your painting. So painting your skies, um, holding a lot of water and pigment in the first wash of your painting, painting large washes that cover most of your paper. That's what these brushes are good for. Now, these brushes, because they are the largest brushes, tend to be the most expensive brushes. So, there are some more affordable options out there. You don't need to spend $300 on a natural hair brush to paint a beautiful painting. So, this is a Raphael Soft Aqua Size 8, and I forget exactly how much. These are more affordable brushes than some of the other higher end, more expensive ones, and they work pretty well. They're good brushes. So the first brush that we need is a large mop brush. The second type of brush that you need is a medium round brush. So here is a size 14 round brush. And what I use this for is in the middle part of my painting, after I've done my first wash, the large middle value wash where I'm reloading, I'm changing colors, that's what I use this type of brush for. So this can still hold a decent amount of water and pigment, and when you're trying to make a large connected middle value shape, this is the brush that you wanna use. You don't need as much water as what the a large uh, mop brush holds, and you might wanna make some smaller marks. This is another important brush. You'll paint three-fourths of your painting with this brush right here. And the last type of brush that I think is really important is a smaller synthetic brush. So something like this. This is like a middle size to smaller synthetic brush. And this holds less water, less pigment, and it's very important for the details of your painting. Think of it this way. You're going from the largest brush to the smallest brush. So your first wash, large mop brush. Your middle value wash with a little bit more of connectivity and more thought goes into it more color changes, medium size round brush. And then your darks and your details, those little bits of your painting that finish up the painting, you need a smaller synthetic brush. With these three brushes, you can paint anything that you wanna paint. Now, after you get a good handle on these three brushes, think about some small marks that you might wanna make, little specialty things, little things that you might not be able to do with this brush. So. An example of that for me is I really like this sign writer's brush. If I want power lines or small little birds in my painting, I use something like this. But that's something that can come later, you know? You can develop that over time. But if you just need three brushes, these are the three brushes I would recommend. So I hope that that brings some clarity to you. And I know that this is really overwhelming, especially early on when you're learning to paint, you, won't, you don't wanna spend a lot of money on brushes you don't even know if you'll need. I know I've done that before. I've bought some expensive brushes and it turned out that they didn't really work for me. Now, if you're interested, I do have an Amazon link below that has three basic brushes that can help get you started. Now, full disclosure, I get a small little affiliate commission if you follow that link, but no pressure there. If you buy them elsewhere, go to your local art shop if you have one nearby. If not, you wanna give me a little bit of support, use that uh, affiliate link. So when I was first getting started, this was overwhelming for me. I would see artists that have, you know, hundreds of brushes and I would think, I don't even know what each one of these brushes does. So hopefully this will clarify that for you. And I hope that this information can help you out as you get started. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, How to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've got some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is 
overworking my painting. I talk through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. So thank you for spending some time with me today. Keep on practicing, keep pushing forward, and I'll see you next time.